Hey guys, uh, Dr. Theo Naomi here. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a lesson uh, that talks about three ways to teach addition. So, you know, first off, for those of you that don't know, I'm a board certified plastic surgeon, uh, but I've got two children, ages five and currently ages five and four, uh, who I teach in the home. And both of them are lovely to teach. You know, my daughter uh, is technically in kindergarten, she's five, but she's about fifth grade level in math. Uh, we're just um, really getting into algebra at this point. Uh, my son is four, he's at preschool, but he's about first or second grade level. So a lot of this uh, is based on how I've taught them. And so I wanted to really go through this lesson uh, on addition. One of the reasons I wanted to go through this lesson is as a parent, at some point your child's gonna come home um, with addition. And you may not know how they're being taught at school, um, which method is being taught. So I figured I would introduce the three most common methods that uh, addition is taught. That way, you know, just as a reference, if your child's not getting it, you can refer to this video and, you know, just kind of figure out what may be happening at, at, at home. Or more importantly, if your the school is teaching your child in one method, but your child's not getting it, at least you'll have a different uh, frame of reference or an alternative method that you can try to uh, re-engage your children uh, with. For example, you know, the third method, the number line, is not a method that my daughter enjoyed or really got. And so having tried out some of these methods, it was nice to have different options. So um, for those of you guys who are watching, hopefully this is a video that'll be helpful and a video that you can either save or subscribe to this. That way, when the school year starts um, and your child may be confused about addition, you'll have different methods of teaching them. Just a quick word about addition. So addition is generally in the American education system, something that's taught between kindergarten and first grade. Uh, if the child is in a really advanced preschool program, they will actually sometimes teach them addition. Um, I've found that this can something that can be taught as early as two, maybe even three. I would probably recommend waiting between three and four just because your child has a better ability to communicate um, before introducing addition. But addition, before addition, most kids are just counting. So everything done in classroom is counting. Addition is the first time where they have to take the counting, input those numbers and come up with a different output or a sum. And uh, once the child gets confused with addition or feels like they're not able to grasp it, then they start to get disinterested in math. Um, and that's really a sad thing because I think everyone is capable of learning. And so part of this video is meant to help parents whose kids may be struggling with addition um, to use maybe a different method that they may uh, better grasp to then kind of rebuild their confidence. And that's really the most important part when it comes to math, the confidence. Without the confidence, children are hesitant to try new problems or even if they figure it out, they may feel like they just got lucky. So hopefully this video helps. Just to start, so these are the three most common methods that addition is taught. Uh, the first method is called number correspondence. And that's when you're adding two numbers together to equal a sum. And you can do this with the manipulatives, and I'll show you that later. Second method is number bond methods, where you show that the two numbers are connected to form a third higher or larger number. And the fourth uh, method incorporates number lines. So with that, I will show the number correspondence, okay? Just as a prerequisite to um, addition, a child needs to know something called one-to-one -one correspondence, okay? A child should know that this number one corresponds to exactly one object, okay? If a child does not know this, then you need to back up, make sure that they understand that concept before you even try to teach addition. Because without that concept, these are just symbols that have no uh, numerical representation, okay? So in the number correspondence method, okay, child gets a problem, say one plus one. A child that has to correspond the number one with one object, okay, then realize that there's a separate number here that also corresponds to different number of objects. Then count the two of them, one, two, and then either be able to show that it equals the same number of objects, two, or if they're capable of writing, write that, okay? So this is the number correspondence method, okay? So a child knows that you have a number that corresponds to a certain number of objects, you're adding it to another number, and you're getting a larger number, 
okay? I'll show this again with, you know, a, a large, a different problem. So, since my daughter likes pink, I'll go with pink for her. So, two plus three, okay? So let's just say your child gets this problem or you pose this problem to your child to see if they actually understand, um, you know, addition and you're trying to gauge whether they get it or not. Here's how I would ask a child to do this, okay? I, before they even try to count fingers or do anything, I would say, okay, what number is this? And they would say the number two. And I say, what does that mean to you? What does that number two mean? And oftentimes children will look and they don't really understand what that question means. And so I would then redirect it. Does this mean that we have two chickens, two cows? Does that mean we have one? And sometimes I'll even say, okay, this is the number two, okay? draw circles and I'll say, which one, which circle represents two? If a child can pick out that this represents two or you can even count one, two, then they have the number correspondence down. If a child can't tell the difference between the one and the two, then their problem is not addition. Their problem is number correspondence in the sense that they don't understand that two corresponds to two objects. Okay, so that's where at that point you pause with the addition go back and review that number correspondence. I think I have a video on that before you even really get into the addition, okay? So once a child can pick out that there's two objects here, then I would say to the child, okay, so if that's two, how many circles or objects or squares or whatever you like corresponds to this number, okay? And at that point, you're hoping your child goes one, two, or three, okay? If they count out of order, if they continue counting past three, all right, then they're missing something there, okay? Whenever I have children uh, count, I always recommend they touch each object. So I recommend they go one, two, three. Eventually, they'll be able to visually just look and say this is three objects. But whenever I find even my own kids starting to miscount, I always go back, touch each one, one, two, three, okay? Then the last part of this is, okay, so now if you bring all of them together, bring all of them to the bottom, what do you have, okay? And then I have them count one, two, three, four, five, okay? There's some videos of my kids doing this uh, when they were uh, much younger. And then for extra credit, I will then have them, you know, especially for younger kids at, the, say, you know, kindergarten, first grade level, actually write the five, and there you have it. So this is the number correspondence method for teaching addition, okay? A second method that can be taught, and this is oftentimes emphasized, especially in the Singapore math curriculum, is number bounds method, okay? So let's take a problem. One plus one equals two, okay? In this method, okay, the goal is to show that the numbers are interconnected, okay? So you have one here, one there, and when they meet, they're going to equal two, okay? So one plus one equals two, okay? And so, so this is called the number bonds method. I'm gonna write this here, because less people are familiar with this. So in case your child comes home with something like this, at least you know um, what they're being taught, okay? So in this system here, what they're trying to show is the interconnection between those two numbers, okay? In the sense that you have one object here, so you want to use, yes, you have one object here, and you have another object here, okay? And when you add them together, they will equal two objects. The key thing to emphasize here for kids, and this is where I think kids tend to miss this, right? Is they tend, they fail to realize that this is the same as this. Okay, so then I will actually draw that out for them and say, this one is this one, okay, it's the same one, and this one is this one, okay? So this one is this one. And then when I make that connection, oftentimes they're like, oh, I get it now, okay? So if your child is getting this at home, at school, and they may not be getting it, this is oftentimes the biggest gap because they can see that, you know, if we clean this up, they can see that that one plus one is two, right? But when they see that two over there separately, 
they don't have their math facts down enough to know that just, you know, um, one, one plus one is two. They may know it, they may not know it. Okay, they may know this, that one plus one is two. If they don't know it, they're kind of wondering, okay, well, where did this random number come from? Okay, and so that's where you have to almost make that connection for them and show them that this, or for example, this is an even better way to show it, that this one here and this one here are coming together to form two, okay? I think once you show kids this, they usually light up and they start to get it, okay? And this can be done, for example, with the same example, two plus three. So they go through a real situation as to how I would introduce this, okay? If I were teaching this, what I would say is what number is this? And they would say two. I say, like, okay, take two green circles. And with this, I think it's really important to use different colors with the manipulatives, okay? That way they get that the two and the three are different. Then I say, what number is this? And they would say three. I say, okay, th take three orange circles, okay? I'd say, now, if we move them together and put them in one big circle, what do you have? Two, and this is the three, and it equals five, okay? So this is the number methods bond of teaching addition. If you start by teaching, if you start teaching addition, I would probably do the number correspondence, and then once they get the number correspondence, then introduce the number bonds, because sometimes interconnected circles can confuse them a little bit. But once they get this, this is really great, because it also helps with them with subtraction, where you have five, you know, you have five, you can show them, well, if you take away two, then you have three. So they really, it really, this, the, the real benefit of this system of teaching addition is it shows how the numbers are interconnected. And that becomes helpful later on when they start to do uh, more addition. The last method, and this one was the one that, um, you know, my daughter liked the least. And so because she liked it the least, when my son was of age, I didn't really introduce this, was the number line method, okay? Um, and most of you guys, you know, may have been introduced to this. So, in the number line method, a child learns that the numbers are organized in a, in a coordinate, okay? So, let's say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and let's make this a 7, okay? And then we'll write this down. Actually, let's start here with zero. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? So if the child, this is a number line, okay? And in that number line method, this number one, okay? A child gets a problem like this, one plus one, okay? That child has to take the first number and identify it on the number line, which is here, okay? Then they have to realize that since it's adding, you're gonna be getting bigger, and you're gonna be getting bigger by the second number. So one plus one, so that means you're gonna go over one. And the answer equals two, okay? That's the number line method. An alternative way to do this, if you had a different problem, say two plus three, okay? The child would need to go to the number, one of the numbers, okay? Which sometimes gets confusing because then it'll ask you, well, how do I know which number to go with? So for starters, I would recommend just use a convention of say, you know, go with, always go with the top number and then move over by the bottom number, okay? So if they go to the top number of two, then they have to jump three spot places. One, two, three, okay? And there you have it as five, okay? I think this method is, you know, this here I'm editorializing a little bit and, you know, I'd love to hear the comments what other people think. I thought this method was the hardest to teach, okay? Um, simply because 
you know, oftentimes they're confused about just, they're learning, they've just finished learning how to count um, before they start addition. And depending on where they start, if they miscount, or for example, if they start at two and they call the two one, two, three, all right, then they're at a four, which is incorrect, okay? So oftentimes what, the, what I ended up doing was showing them how to count the peaks, okay? Because each peak represented a count. So this is one peak, one, this is two, and this is three, to make sure that that matched. You know, when I first started teaching, and I started teaching addition, you know, probably younger than most kids are introduced to addition, this was really hard to kind of explain. Uh, I ended up doing uh, an analogy about a bunny that was jumping for rabbits. And I said, okay, where's the bunny gonna start? And so the bunny would start at two, okay? And like, okay, so and how many, uh, how many carrots is the bunny gonna end up eating? My artist is not the best, okay? And it go three, so okay, so this is one, two, three, and then the final answer is five. So that is the number line method of teaching uh, addition. Uh, once again, the one that, you know, is probably my least favorite. Um, but, you know, the hard part about uh, education sometimes is you as a parent may not get to choose the method that your child learns. And so if your child comes home from school and you realize it's a method that corresponds to one of these and they're getting it, great. You know, this helps, this video will hopefully help you support them. If it's a method that they're not getting, then at least you have two other methods here uh, that I've shown you that you can try uh, to get them to understand it. And then if they consistently are not getting it in the methods being taught at school, you may want to have the conversation with the teacher and say, hey, you know, this is a method we've tried at home, whether it's a number correspondence method or the number, bond, number bonds method, you know, would you be okay to him experimenting with one of these methods in the classroom? That way he feels confident. Ultimately, when a child is confident enough in this learning, they'll be able to do all three methods. But for starters, I would say pick one, pick one that works well with your child. If your child is getting it, then you can essentially move on to another method to kind of strengthen their understanding of addition. But if they don't get it what, with the one that you started, for example, you know, one of the books that I started with was a Horizons math book that is heavily dependent on a number line. Okay. And my daughter didn't get that. And so for a while, I was sitting there trying to explain with the analogy of the bunny and the carrot. And eventually, as soon as I moved away from that method and went with the number correspondence method, she got it. She got it. She got it fairly quickly. And so, you know, and I had to learn that the hard way. So hopefully, you know, you guys will have at least three methods that you can use to introduce addition to your kids. Once again, uh, if this information is helpful, feel free to hit the subscribe button. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing all of your comments um, and hopefully this is helpful. Take care.